12 blue funky bow. We came around and let's get started making a pretty little set up here. Everything in this bag and this little bunny. country craft corner how in the world are you guys doing today it is so good to see you again and thank you so so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to and the craft of the day is going to be a little centerpiece to go on my ivy table and I will explain my ivy table to you when we get over to the ivy table uh, I have already kind of set things on my ivy table and on the shelf above my ivy table so I will show you and explain exactly what I did and how I put things and you know explain my thinking to you guys uh, about the ivy table and for those of you who are familiar with what goes around the ivy table you'll remember that I got that big birdhouse from the antique mall here in town and I am also going to make a 12 loop funky bow to just to tie around that so and to tie everything together So come along with me as we do a very quick little arrangement. I hope I don't know again This is going to be something new. I've never created this arrangement before I'm going to be using accent pieces from a centerpiece that I did last year but I did the uh, the centerpiece in a totally different tray or I don't even remember what I put it in to be honest with you a plate or something who knows what I have it in but I'm gonna be adding a couple of elements to it this year so anyway let me turn the camera around and let's get started making a pretty little centerpiece and a pretty 12 loop funky bow all right be right back okie dokie there's the ivy table right there so you can see I already have something set on top of it so we'll go over there and we'll take a closer look at it but first of all, let's create this little centerpiece. And I'm going to create it in this tray. And it's a little dusty, so let me clean it. Use this Liz's favorite spray way. I have to say it's become one of my favorites too now. Glass cleaner. You just get it from Walmart. It's like it's like $4 a uh, can. Here we go. Now you can see I'm going to be using a smaller version of my big trays that I use on my dining room table and on my kitchen table. And it is a, sorry, it is a glass tray and it is exactly the same. It, those trays come in, came in two different sizes, the larger size and this size. And I've got two of these trays. The other tray like this sits out on my dining room sideboard. So. Uh, I'm not going to be putting a placemat or anything down in this one uh, just because I don't have anything that size or color that I want to use. So I'm just going to be just setting the decor in here as is. Okay, first thing I want to do, and here are all the, this is everything I used in this arrangement last year. Everything in this bag and this little bunny. They still have these little bunnies at Hobby Lobby. I paid five dollars for her you can see easter 2018 on the back there <laughs> i've had her all year i used her last year and i bought these eggs to match her so i will be putting some eggs in this centerpiece so but this is all the elements i used last year and this is what i'm going to use this year so let's start out with some glue dot work here these spiffy glue dots I need to pick myself up another box of them. I've about gone through a whole box. Do y'all believe that? <laughs> Let me do a flash for you there. You can see what size they are. Magic little bullets, let me tell you. And that's all I have left. I have used a bunch. So I'm going to use this little piece of wood and I'm going to put this plaque on top of the wood just to lift it up a little bit. So I'm going to put mm, maybe three glue dots across this thing. 
And I think I might glue dot the, first thing I wanna do, let's see if this will work. Let's see if I can glue dot this down to this mirror. Except that's not quite where I want it. I'm telling you, you guys, these things work like a charm. Let me glue dot this on the other side, and then we'll place the whole thing together. How about that? I did this kind of backwards, didn't I? Oh, well. We'll figure it out. <laughs> this way and right about like like that so there we go that's not going anywhere now I'm gonna go ahead and place my candle this is one of those ombre looking candles that goes from cream to pink to kind of a corally color as you can see very pretty candle at that from and that and then i think i'm going to put my bunny right about there start out with some greenery. I did buy this this year from Hobby Lobby. I'm just going to leave it intact, I think, and spread it out. Be careful. Spread it out. I want to set this kind of like that, which I know is kind of seems backwards, but I need to glue dot this down on the mirror too. So it's something like that. In. I don't want to hide the home sweet home, and I wanted something back there a little bit more. All right, now let's see what all I have in here. Bought some of these out. I did get these this year, but I have some daisies. 
start with one of them. I've only got three. I've got four eggs. I've got some white daisies. Not sure I like these so much. Huh? Yeah, a couple are not too bad. And then Hello. I have these teeny tiny little ramekins. I don't even know where I got them, but watch me glued on <laughs> this egg on to lift it up back there in that corner. I love glue dots. They're like magic. if you can see a little bit of it. Oh my goodness, look at that. Alrighty, that just about does it. Except that I do want to add a little bit more blue in to pull in. I wish I had, I might have to go back in my coffers back there and see if I have some more of these little flouncy flowers here. I'll be right back have to go very far. Look what I found on my way. I had these sitting on my kitchen table over there. And these are just like some very blushy looking berries. I think if I add those in, they'll be super pretty. Look at that. Love that. Oh, that looks so good. All right. get another one of those little ramekins, huh? Get that one up too. Chris asked me when I bought these years and years ago, now Arlen, what are you gonna do with that? Who in the world, what we, I said, I'll find a, something to do with them, Chris, don't worry. Here I am, how many years later? <laughs> Finding something to do with them. Very soft, very pretty, very springy. Maybe a little Eastery too on this one, huh? That's okay. We can do Easter. We can do a combination. As I told you, I'm kind of doing a combination of the two. Super pretty. I love it. All right. Let's make us a funky bed. So the three ribbons I'm going to use. This is softer than these ribbons depict, but I am going to be putting this, tying this on the birdhouse that sits on the floor next to the table. And I have a plaque above on the shelf that is gonna pair nicely with this. So you gotta trust me and trust my eye that, I want, that I'm gonna pull it all together. So I'm just gonna make a 12 loop funky bow on this one. So I just want four strips of each ribbon at 24 inches long. I'll be right back when I get them cut. All right, everybody, I'm back and I'm ready to make myself a 12 loop funky bow. Now, I'm gonna give a bit of an ex explanation for this bow and uh, this shouldn't take me long to make it so I'm gonna go ahead and probably do the whole tutorial for you guys here. Well I didn't do my dovetails on this so let me show you how to do that. 
just pile all four pieces up on top of one another and fold them. Start at the fold, had to reteach myself this this year. My way down to the edge and that makes a dove's tail. Now, as I said, I cut four strips of each type of ribbon at 24 inches long. Each strip of ribbon equals one loop in our 12 loop funky bow. So, let's get started. I have a cheat sheet on my BLOG blog and I will give you a link in the description of this video where you can go to that blog and then within that blog, there is a PDF link and you can click on that and print off my Funky Bow Cheat Sheet. I learned how to do the Funky Bow from Julie Samaka, well, the basic concept of the Funky Bow using multiple ribbons in one bow, multiple patterns and colors of ribbon in one bow, uh, and the basic concept of how she did it. But I've kind of tweaked it and kind of done my own thing with it. Uh, it's still called a funky bow though. I don't know whether she came up with a name or not, but I give her credit, definitely. So anyway, first thing we do is fold our first strip in half, completely in half. Go to our board. I'm going to measure out uh, six inch loops, I think, because that's a pretty big birdhouse over there. So I'm going to make six inch loops. Then I go to my back tail and I twist that back tail around to the front. Just so at this point, all of the tails are moving in the same direction. Let me just say, if y'all don't wanna sit through this whole funky bow tutorial, you can go to minute mark this and I'll be heading over to the ivy table at that point and tying this on to the birdhouse and putting my centerpiece into place and explaining about my ivy table. So minute mark this. Anyway, here we go. Second loop, six inches, and accordion it in there, side by side by side. Don't pile them on top as best you can. And always go back to that back tail. Texturally speaking, your ribbon is usually two-sided, even if it looks like it's one-sided. So the first time through the pattern, we're gonna be pointing all of the loops up from center. Picture my thumb as the center of the bow. Up from center, down from center. So we're gonna go through the pattern again, start it over again, and this time we're gonna turn that loop and point it down from center. Center being my thumb. Again, same process, go to that back tail and twist it. And here we go. Each time you start the pattern over again, you switch the direction of the loop. We're gonna go through the pattern a total of four times. Three times, four times, yes. Mm -hmm. This is the end of the second time through. Here we go, starting over again for the third time. Fold it in half, I love this ribbon, it's so pretty. Six inches and point that loop up from center. And go to that back tail and twist. from center, accordion it in. The ribbon is slipping back into the crook of my finger, see that? You know, instead of holding it with just your two fingers, let it slide and let your top of your finger and the side of your thumb hold the ribbon. That way too, you can also let go a little bit and give that part of your hand a rest. At least that's where I always cramp, is right there, so. Here we go, continuing on, up from center, and twist, 
Last time through, point the loops down from center. I tend to pull my loops forward so that I can find them better when I go to fluff my bow. I tend to pull them forward. And one more. Down from center. Okay, now I'm gonna grab a pipe cleaner. I'm gonna grab a black one. I'm gonna lay it over. You can find the center, just about the center of your pipe cleaner. Lay it over beside your thumb and pull the bottom around the bottom and the top around the top. And you want to use this hand that you've been holding the ribbon shut with as resistance and the hand that you've been using to manipulate the loops. Get those fingers up as close as you can to the back of the bow and twist, 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 twist a lot. Twist the bow, twist the chenille tie, twist everything. Whew. There we go. Now, before I do anything else, I know I want to tie this bow onto the birdhouse. So I want to put a piece of ribbon in the back of this. I'm going to tie it right into the pipe cleaner. And that way I'll be able to tie this bow on to the birdhouse with these long strips. I'll tell you the truth, you guys, I'm gonna come over here and continue to talk to you. My uh, back, as you all know, for those of you who have been following me for a very long time, you know that when I get to this point in my series, sometimes I get a backache. The most important yeah. part of any bow <laughs> is the fluffing. And it really and truly is, you guys. Also, I wanted to mention, I do have a Bow Making 101 series here on my channel. <clears throat> I'll try to remember to put a link for that in the description below. I definitely do a 12 loop funky bow in that playlist. Also, along with the nine loop and the 16 loop. I haven't gotten back to the 20 loop. I do wanna turn this over and separate these tails a bit. You don't have to do this, but this is something I sometimes do just so they're not all piled in one place or together. That's another hint when fluffing your bow, try to not have a bunch of your ribbons right next to one another. The point, another, listen to me, there's some good grammar. <laughs> another, uh, you know, move them around, separate them, you know, make sure that there's not two, as best you can, sometimes like these two, they're gonna be kind of beside one another or above one another, you know? But put your hands on every single loop. Make sure you touch every single loop. Make it as big and as pretty as you can get it. And you're gonna have yourself a very pretty, funky bow. Always use wired ribbon, that's another I always suggest is that you use wired ribbon. And there we go. I'm loving it. I'm feeling like I want this bright pink to kind of take a bit of a back seat to the floral and the and let it be more of an accent. You know? I think I like that. See how I did that? I just moved those pink loops to the back and let the buffalo check and the floral kind of come up a little bit in the design. See that? Pretty. Maybe one pink one up between those two black ones like that. Just mess around with it. 
until you get it looking the way you want it to look. I don't like that. All right, so that'll about do that. So let me do some final words while I'm sitting here looking at you. So let me get do some final words here. I appreciate you guys stopping by here as I'm working slowly. I'm slowly and diligently working through my spring decor, aren't I? Adding an element of Easter in as I go, just a touch here and there. I'm loving this decor, you guys. I, can't, I know I say this in every video and you guys are probably really tired of hearing it. <laughs> But I am super happy with how this is working out and with this new paint job that I will reveal in my home tour. I mean, everything. I've shown you snippets here and there, and you all know it's really pretty, and you know Chris worked so hard on this paint. Oh, my goodness. And he did a superb job. It looks absolutely beautiful, and I cannot wait to show you everything in my home tour. I can't wait. Uh, but... I'm just going to diligently work my way on through the rest of my little accent, uh, you know, my little accent vignettes. I have a lantern coming up here. I've got, you know, I've got uh, a bunch of stuff coming up for you guys that I'm loving being able to give you little vignette after little vignette as I'm naturally working through my spring decor. I'm loving it. So, so let me just say, I hope that those of you who are suffering or struggling with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making each day the very, very best that it can be. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around. And I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, I'm going to come back with one more video as I go over here and I'll, I'm going to talk to you in the video. But I just wanted to, I'd like to do my final words when I'm looking at you, you guys. I just, I, I really like to do that while I'm looking at you. But with all that said, until next time, y'all take good, good care. I'll be right back behind the camera though. Bye-bye. Okie dokie everybody. Here is my Ivy table set up here. And let me explain to you why we call this table the Ivy table. For those of you who follow me on Instagram and actually here on YouTube, you might have seen in my community post that I put a picture of how the ivy table used to look before Chris painted it black. It used to be a very light maple color and it used to have ivy leaves painted on the front of these doors. It was a pretty table, but we knew we were gonna be getting all of our black furniture that we have in here and we wanted this to match and we didn't wanna get rid of it. We love this little table. So one of these days, I keep saying this, I'm gonna clean out either side and the drawers there. <laughs> oh, it needs it. Anyway, anyway, let's go through this vignette here. Kincaid. That is my one and only Thomas Kincaid picture. I asked for that a couple of Christmases ago and Chris got it for me. I was super duper grateful. I love it. I think it's beautiful and I'm just so grateful to have it. And this shelf I got from our local country store called Dottie's Den for those of you who live locally here. She does not have a website, you guys. But for those of you who live locally near Spotsylvania, she's got two stores, actually one off of Lafayette and the other over off of uh, Old Plank Road, I believe. So that's where I got this shelf. We've added a couple of hooks to it though. Chris screwed those hooks in for me. So I've been hanging some things from it as of late. This heart and bow grapevine garland. I got that from Paper Classics or no, KP Creek, I think. Anyway, let's go through what I have up going on up here. I had that plaque last year from Hobby Lobby. Live the life you love and love the life you live. Nothing else in, oh, I'm fibbing. Nothing on this shelf is new except for those two candles. <laughs> had that birdhouse 
and two little slice of bunnies. And then I kept the same lantern up there. I just replaced it with a cream colored candle inside. And then of course put one garland of the same garland I've been using throughout. And then on top of the table, I just put a couple of egg plates. I got those from Tuesday morning here in town. I kept a couple of Dickens houses up here and some spool candles up too, just because I think they're pretty and they add a warmth to this little table decor. Life is a beautiful ride. I got that last year at, I don't know, I don't remember, either Hobby Lobby or Joanne's, I believe. That really is a metal bike on there. That's a heavy little dude. And then here is the arrangement that I just did. Home sweet home. Turned out pretty, whimsical and pretty. And then this big old bunny, <laughs> I brought him out from last year. And there's my Walmart lamp I got from Walmart. And my other bunny plate. I moved this lamp over here that used to sit over by the hearth. I moved it over here for this time of year. And then this pretty wreath hangs on this door to go outside, my three angels and the hearth. And then over here is where that big funky bow went, right here on this. And you can see it pairs very nicely with everything, especially with that. I wanted something to pull in that picture and that does it beautifully. I'm super happy with how this worked out, you guys. I love it. <laughs> and things are looking, as you can see, I have really, I mean, there, there are quite a few things on this table, I guess, but it's a lot less than what I sometimes have on this table. <laughs> so I'm going with it, you guys. I'm very happy with how everything is, is working out. So anyway, that'll be it for this one, you sweet, sweet subbies. <laughs> so I'll just say until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.